I say. cut in a mean lawn, man. My dad <laughs> taught me well. <laughs> Article comes out that next Thursday, raining sideways, lines to no the corner. No way. Yeah, we're like, holy crap. They put the wrong rice cooker on the truck. Why, is it too small or is it? It was empty. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the show. As always, this is a show about screw-ups, about failures, about missteps, about, about being human, because that's what we all are. We have great ideas, we have big dreams, and they're always going to be hard to make happen. There's going to be some hilarious things that happen along the way. So, today, we are going to be talking to Matt Lewis. He has a food truck here in Seattle. It's called Where You At Matt? Where You At Matt? Where are you at, Matt? And I'm really excited to learn about all the food that he makes. It's New Orleans food. I assume that's jambalaya. I assume that's other types of spicy things. I know nothing, and he's going to show me everything. Before we do that, we've got to get a drink, and we got a special drink for Matt today. We're going to turn it over to our resident mixologist, the man that knows more about everything than I know, Mr. Jack Sanders. What are we drinking tonight? Thank you very much, Sean. Tonight I have all the King's men. So we're gonna start with an ounce and a half of Maletti today. And then we're gonna do equal parts of the cherry hearing and the Riga Black Balsam liqueur. Just wanna add a little bit of a warm seasonal flavor to this darker liqueur. Half ounce of the cherry hearing and a half ounce of Riga. Quarter ounce of our green chartreuse just to bring up a little bit of a herbaceous note on the back end of this cocktail. A little bit of the Yerga Chef apricot liqueur, only a quarter ounce. And a quarter ounce of Maletti. And then we'll add some ice to our concoction. And give it a little stir for a brief chill, only about 10 seconds. And then we'll strain it into each of these cups. And there we have it. All the king's men. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Today I've got, well I guess tonight, I've got uh, Matt Lewis uh, with us who has a food truck in Seattle called Where, Where You At Matt? <laughs> which, uh, I, which I've actually had food from, uh, which is really um, makes me excited. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, well, I'm excited to talk to you about that and the food and what got you there. But first off, can you just explain to everybody what it is? So, where are you at, Matt, exactly? Uh, originally born and raised in New Orleans. Okay. So, in New Orleans, where you at is, hey, how you doing, right? Is it, now is it enunciated like that? Where you say? It's like, it's more like where you at. Where you, where, so like there's like a, one at? of the little flyer papers down there that's actually where you at. And a lot of times it's spelled a couple different ways, but it's Y-A-T. Y-A-T. So they'll actually call people from New Orleans Yats. Yats? Yeah. Where you where yet? Where? Oh man! Where, where yet? Where yet? Where yet? I'm like, okay, you know, it's a mobile location. Yeah. We want to bring some of the southern hospitality to Seattle, and it's like, you know what? We should just call it where yet. Yeah. And so it kind of stuck. I was like, oh great, you know. And so people caught on, but then I didn't even put the mat at the end at oh, the beginning. Didn't? No. It was just where yet. The so people started saying, oh, where yet, Matt? And it was kind of the thing. So whenever I show up to a party. Oh, where you at, Matt? And I was like, oh, wow, okay, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> right? I got my business relations renewal the yeah. next year from City of Seattle. Yeah. And in the DBA column, it had where you at, Matt. I did not put it there. You didn't put it there. I didn't put it there. I'm like, what? How oh, did this happen? No yeah. Way. I was like, well, I guess that's that's the name. So the Southern Spirits. The like Southern taking, Spirits. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Where, uh, where you at, Matt? <laughs> are you, are you, you ready for a drink? Yeah. Are you offering? Are you, are, well, are, you, are you ready for a drink, Jack? I am. All right, all right. In honor of the Creole King himself, this is called All the King's Men. All Woo-hoo. the King's Men. We've got dry ice, right. we've got a tower, we've got brulee, because it's, well, you know, what we've does got brulee. brulee? Still can't look. And a tower. Don't look. I'm worried. I'm well, I don't have any hair to burn, so go for it. If you've seen, like, <laughs> the opening of Macbeth, that's what's happening behind us right now. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Yeah. So my friends, we have my version of a green point. We'll just call it uh, Jet City's point if you want to look at it like that. <laughs> feel right. free to break away the, the brulee top. That's okay. a, it's a beautiful thing. So feel free to dig into it and enjoy some of it. Okay. Nice. Have fun. All right. Cheers. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Chef. Cheers. Mm -hmm. All right. You, re you ready? How do you, to like, do I toast differently in New Orleans than, than normal? Do we say cheers or is there something else just that you would toast say? toast often. Toast. And you're good. Let's just say toast often. <laughs> toast often. Yeah. Is I don't it supposed even know to burn? came out. No. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Uh, cheers. cheers. Toast often. Okay. Are we sipping or? Are we sip? Yeah, your choice. Sipping, you choose. Right? Yeah. I'm going to sip first. He's just going to then... say we drink with our face. <laughs> That's all he tells me. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. No, it is. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's really good. Mm. I'm liking that. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You're good. We're good? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, good. that's good. That's really good. Here, I'm going to eat a piece of this. Oh. You're going for it, huh? Is that just uh, brulee sugar? Or just brulee sugar. It? Okay. See? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Where did you, like, uh, have you always been entrepreneurial? Did you start that <clears throat> way growing up, or did you have, like, the... The real nine to five office space, like go out, break the fax machine job, like. I, I, I'm glad to say I've never had that job. You've never had that never job? Never had that job. Always been entrepreneurial as a young kid, probably when I was 10, 11, 12. Somewhere in there I started cutting grass. Yeah. And uh, it was mostly for my allowance. And after that I was like, you know what, I can cut my neighbor's grass. And then I cut my neighbor's grass. So I had five yards like at 11 years old. And uh, I would cut grass, and I started out like ten bucks a lawn. Was so. it like all nearby? You just like yeah, walk all, over to all within places, you know right? within a block radius of my how, house. How did you sell that when you're 11? You just go knock on the door and I say. I cut a mean lawn, man. My dad <laughs> taught me well. Like it, it was like it, it was. <laughs> they see it. And they're they like, saw Wait, it. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So like, yeah, I, I, yeah. This is the 11 I take year care. Old yeah, that. that's what did that what did that lead to? I cut. I, honestly, I cut grass all the way through high school. Uh, and whatever, and moved from New Orleans to Birmingham, Alabama when I was in high school, and okay. I, I picked up several yards right in the neighborhood then. So yeah. it was always a way to make quick money. A Did couple you, of summers I painted houses, Yeah. and then I had some of my buddies from school come and work for me. And, uh, and at the time, I was like, that was great money. Yeah. And so I think once you get that bug, it's hard to be in a situation where an office space. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my girl will come home and it's like, I'm fascinated by the story she tells. It's like this distant land far, far away that I've never visited. You've and never I'm had just to like, go there right, tell me more, this is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to college, got my undergrad degree from Xavier University. So I went back to New Orleans. Yeah. And while I was there, I actually worked uh, for my grandfather who was in, uh, he had a, we call it construction, but most of the things he did in New Orleans, because the whole city's built on a swamp, yeah. is he uh, leveled houses, moved houses, raised houses. Oh, wow. Like up off the ground because of the Correct. swamp. So, gotcha. yeah, and, I mean, as, <laughs> as, a young, as a young kid, you, you watch this and it's like, wow, I didn't even realize you could do this. Yeah. And, you know, some of the raises he did were like 15 feet up. What? Yeah. By the time I graduated college, I ran one of his crew of men for him. And so that was that was how I made money. And you like you learned a lot from him <clears throat> oh, about sure. how to like manage people. And also like that's that's amazing opportunity to learn that type of stuff. Fast forward a, a little bit closer to what you're doing now. Did you start mm -hmm. other things besides where you at, Matt? Or is this because how long ago was it? Thir Almost ten years. Ten now. years ago. Ten years. So we were one of the uh, pioneers of the food truck industry in Seattle. Yeah. There's only five food trucks. Like, there's only a few in Seattle at that time. At that time, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, like, how would you, how would you even know this is going to become a thing, or that people are actually going to show up? Like, well, you didn't have like the, the food truck mafia like coming into different locations. No, and, that came later. Yeah. 2009 is when I started putting things together. Yeah. And then we opened in 2010. Now, when you, you, why not, why not just a regular restaurant like a brick and mortar like you go someplace else yeah, especially at that time at, at the I don't know there was something about it and um, I think the biggest thing was um, I ran into the ladies that started marination marination mobile okay. um, and to this day they hit it out of the park 
Yeah. I saw what they were able to do. The budget was a lot easier to um, stomach. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could, I could put a business plan together and with 10% of the funding for a restaurant, yeah, 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 I yeah, could yeah, put yeah. a truck together. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they say, you know, restaurants fail because of location, location, location. Well, yeah. it's like, well, if you can move your location in a day, <laughs> why not? Right. Ten years ago, like as, as much as we're all glued to our phones now, yeah. ten years ago, social media was in its infancy. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, Nobody was, you know, even nobody was on Facebook every day. Oh, no, we were texting Instagram between. wasn't a yeah, thing yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that came on fire, you know, many years after that. Yeah. So getting the word out was hard. Yeah. So if you were in a new truck, like, there wasn't a lot. Like, we had, you know, a little bit of buzz, but that was, it was a little bit. Yeah. Finally, someone from The Stranger contacted us and said, hey, we want to do uh, a piece on you guys. But I was like, okay, they're doing a piece. Let's just see how this works, right? Yeah. We'll give it yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, more yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So at the, I think that it was the, uh, the chow, chow hound section in The Stranger. Okay. Uh, it comes out on Wednesdays. So they, we interviewed the next week, it was coming out. Thursday, raining sideways cats and dogs. Now, granted, we'd only done like a max of like 30, 40 people right. in a lunch, so 11 to two That's at it. this location. Yeah. Article comes out that next Thursday, raining sideways lines to no the corner. No way. Yeah, we're like, holy crap. Just right? from the ride <laughs> yeah. up, it's coming like we down. weren't even prepared are... for it, because I was no? like, yeah, just prep, you know, half of what you normally think you would. So it was great, you know, it was just like, holy. What, well, what, what do you do if you're in that situation and you didn't prep for it, or well, you get set up? Like, Seattle loves to wait in line. <laughs> <laughs> This sounds, I, I, like honestly, it sounds uh, so smooth sailing. You've got an amazing team and all the people put together, but, but oh, honestly, <laughs> you gotta tell me. No, There's it's gotta not be just moments, like, oh, moments. Moments. Like, right, I wanna right. know, like oh moments of the things that are going on. So those kind of moments come when, okay, I'm working uh, the truck, go to a wedding. <clears throat> In weddings, you know, it's not like, so a lunch you can get around. It's like, well, you have a certain amount of items. People expect certain things run out. You're just like, hey, we're out of this. Yeah, we're yeah, out yeah, of this. Good. Well, right. when you go to a wedding and somebody orders, hey, I want red beans and rice, jambalaya, gumbo, this po' boy, and beignets. Yeah. Well. By at, the way, I would never think, I mean, I'm sure it's delicious, but I would never think like, I want New Orleans food at my wedding, but that's amazing. Yeah. That's why you don't do our PR. Well, because every. <laughs> <laughs> we show up to the wedding, right? Uh. <laughs> Open the rice cooker, because Miranda, I told you we have red beans and rice, mm -hmm. jambalaya, gumbo, all have all rice. rice. Yeah. They put the wrong rice cooker on the truck. Oh, I don't know. So the one Wait, that was actually small, or is it? It was empty. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. even different. It's yeah. empty. <laughs> we have no dry rice on the truck to even cook. Oh wow. And I'm like, holy. F yeah, like keto jambalaya. You can't mess up somebody's <laughs> wedding like this, right? Like I'm like, so I'm like, holy, shit. and like we're like an hour from the kitchen. We can't go back, get rice, cook rice. Yeah, you know, like we're in the middle of nowhere. So I'm like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna? So look down, like, dude, they gotta have Chinese food here, right? So so in middle I'm of nowhere, almost, there's gotta have God. Chinese food somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we start going through restaurants. It's like, hey, do you guys have rice? And we're like, will you guys deliver? We'll give you guys 20 bucks for delivery. I know. <laughs> and we'll tip your guy really well. Do, do, do they and deliver like, like the dry rice or do they deliver no, cooked no, no, rice? No, 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 cooked like, rice. Cooked rice. So that put us ahead. <laughs> 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 cooked rice, had it delivered to the back of the truck <laughs> at the wedding. And I was like, yeah, my guys are hungry, you know, Chinese food, family meal. To the rescue. <laughs> family meal. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. I think the biggest one that not from like a, it's your wedding, I don't have any food situation, but from a it's a huge day, if we don't make this money, we're all screwed kind of yeah, situation, yeah, 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 yeah. like <laughs> payroll's coming, it was uh, we had one of the big, uh, what they called at the time mobile food rodeos, right? Where they have multiple trucks in one location, usually on a Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. and everybody can come and experience this. 
so of course on Tuesday our truck breaks down and that's the problem with having a mobile kitchen a mobile business right, it's like right, right. it's not just a matter of staffing it's not a just a matter of keeping your equipment maintained, but yeah. now you're maintaining your vehicle too. Now how do, like how do you find out? Somebody just give you a call and say like, uh, "Boss, the uh, truck's not working." No, no, I was on the truck when it broke down. Uh, we had an issue with the differential, and we we limped home, right? Like the no. the gears and all of that. Yeah. So which which turned into like the gearbox that affected the steering. So I was like, we got everything, brought it to mechanics. Like, hey, I have to have this truck back Friday night. Right, all the parts on these big trucks. I mean, we have a Freightliner. They, yeah, they rarely have them in stock anywhere near Seattle. You know, it's always like you got to go to Tennessee. So it's like, yes, I will overnight it. You know, yeah, that's yeah. two hundred fifty bucks. Okay, just put it on the bill. We'll do right, it. Right, right. So they overnight the parts. <clears throat> we call on Thursday. Yeah, I got all the parts in. We're putting it on. Something took a little bit longer. They had to change the gearbox. Got it all work, and the guys at the shop actually stayed late Friday to make sure we had it. Oh wow! So I go Friday. We had to load in Friday night. Yeah. For this event, and like literally the amount of revenue we generate Monday through Friday, we would make in one day at this event. Oh wow! So it's big. Yeah, it's huge. And so the, the shop's super happy that they got everything. I was like, sweet, great, and so they back it out. And it's all sounds good, looks good, and the guy just has this look on his face. I was like, something's not right. Oh no, no, no. And I had one of my guys with me, and he gets out and he's like, it's the wrong part. It's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, when I turn left, the truck goes right. No. What? Because yeah, they had to change the gear. What? So they ordered the wrong part, <laughs> and it's Friday at 6 p.m. I'm like, oh, <laughs> we're not gonna make this, right? And I'm like, there's no way. Like we had prepped for it. Like we're just all the stuff's waiting on the commissary for this. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, oh, let me see. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I'm going to change, you know, physics. Like, no, I, I have the touch, right? Yeah, right, right, like, right, right, right. And I, I'm like, holy shit, this is right. And, and I don't, nobody's ever, I can say, I don't know if you've ever driven a car like this, but I know you've never driven. So no. I'm not getting even to say it. No, it's it's like driving in reverse, but driving forward. Like, that's yeah, like. Yeah, it's even worse. It's, 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 it's the weirdest sensation ever. And it's like, I'm a good driver. And, you know, I feel like. I can handle things like that, but I'm like, all you need to do is have somebody coming at you and like your reaction is to swerve out of the way, but you oh. actually like go right into them, right? And it's like, oh my gosh. So there's no way you can miss this. So what I did is I called uh, the, the tow truck company that towed us there. And I was like, yeah. hey, I need a package deal. How much would it cost you <laughs> to come get my truck, yeah. <laughs> tow it to the event, <laughs> And then come back at 3 a.m. when we're done <laughs> and tow it back to get fixed. Yeah. And the guy thought it was such a funny thing. He's like, yeah, he gave me the best deal ever. I was like, it cost me like 300 bucks to do no round trip. No way. And I called the, the <laughs> producers of the show. I'm like, hey, we're going to make it there, but uh, we're on the back of a tow truck we're right now. Some, we need some extra need some room. room. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I called him and I was like, yeah, that's our one thing. I was like, yeah, you never say die, right? Like, <laughs> You make it to the event. You've got this, <laughs> like a huge. I mean, it has to be a feet. huge. Twenty-five feet. Dumps you off at the event. What What would have happened if you, if you wouldn't made the event? I know. I know you said like the the amount of money that you make Monday through Friday to go to something like this. But how does that affect your business? Like like how much would you lose in this particular situation? A ton. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you what are you planning for the? For the future, like, what do you want to do? I mean, I know we just talked about being, it's a lifestyle business. You could continue to no, do it, it is. forever. It is, like, it is. But uh, what I really love is cooking directly for people. Yeah. The interaction, right? It's, it's, as I've always said, as a young cook to this day, it's being like an artist and being able to sell your work every night and watch people enjoy it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's huge for me. And one of the things I really love and what I've been doing a lot is wine dinners. And uh, we have a little cabin over on Bashan Island, not oh, far from Seattle, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's like, it's my little happy place. And we've set up our property to do events. Yeah. Um, um, but on top of that, out there, one of my passion projects that's quickly turning into more of a business after we get um, all of our certification done and licensing yeah. uh, is growing oysters out there. Growing oysters. oysters out there. Yeah. And well, one thing that, that I 
I love, I'm, I'm jealous of, because I think most, and you mentioned this, I think most artists, mm. so when you think about artists, you got, you got visual artists, you got performance artists, you got poets, literature, things like that. They don't get the opportunity to do what you do with food with 30 people in a night. Correct. It's not going to be the same type of like community or interaction right. or kind of that feeling of just being human <clears throat> that comes with that. That's that's really like admirable. That's really exciting. It, it, it's 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 an amazing experience, and it and it's it's what keeps cooks in the kitchen. Um, it's a thankless job most of the time. Yeah. Whenever I feel like you know I'm getting off or too stressed out, it's like I remind myself of that. Yeah. And yeah. Usually, like if, if I'm able to do a dinner party with friends yeah. and you know not even make money, but just cook for people and have them enjoy that, yeah. it, it it brings you know right you're grounded right back again. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love I love what you're doing. I, we're gonna we're gonna keep drinking. Let's uh, do it. But I think I, I think we'll wrap on that because I think it's beautiful uh, what you're making. Thanks so much for being on the show. And thanks for having me. Yeah, this has been a pleasure. Okay, right we're, gonna, we're toast. Hey, cheers, often. cheers often. Cheers, cheers toast often. Toast often. Toast often. Toast. No, okay. prost. That's right. Prost. <laughs> Nostrovia. Yeah, All right. Nostrovia. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the show. And if you like what you see, or you're interested in learning about how you know other people mess up like you, then subscribe and ring the bell. And if you ring the bell, then you're gonna find out when we're gonna do this again. And if you have a screw up, a flub up, a whatever, then go to fups.com. Hope to see you on the show.